Our commencement speaker today is Henry Fritz Schaefer III, one of the most distinguished physical scientists in the world. A computational and theoretical chemist, Schaefer directs the Center for Computational Quantum Chemistry at the University of Georgia. He's a prolific author, having written several books including Science and Christianity, Conflict or Coherence, Scientists and Their Gods, and Quantum Chemistry. He's authored more than 1,500 scientific publications and ranks as one of the most highly cited scientists in the world. He's won numerous awards, including the American Chemical Society's Award in Pure Chemistry and also in Physical Chemistry. He earned his bachelor's degree from MIT and his doctorate in chemical physics from Stanford University. He has taught at UC Berkeley and University of Texas, Austin, before moving on to the University of Georgia, where he is the Purdue Professor of Chemistry. An active Protestant Christian educator, Schaefer regularly speaks about issues of science and faith. So join a privilege to welcome him to Westmont. Will you please join in welcoming Dr. Schaefer? Good morning. Um, first, I need to thank President Beebe for the opportunity to be here. Um, let me express my warm congratulations to each graduate and appreciation to the parents, family members, and, and multitude of friends here this morning. Um, it's a very special day. I enjoyed my uh, time yesterday morning with the chemistry students and, uh, and later with the professors up on the hill here. My only previous visit to Westmont was to speak at the opening of the Whittier Science Building which is now the old science building, apparently. So it's been a while. Uh, I have attended a, a very large number of graduation ceremonies over the years, only a few of which I was asked to speak at. Uh, the best advice I've had in this regard was given by a scholar from Nigeria who noted the five critical ingredients of a graduation address. He called these the five Bs. Be brief, baby, be brief. <laughs> so set your telephones for 15 minutes, and uh, I hope to be finished. One thing speakers, commencement speakers, are expected to do is can describe the graduates as the brightest and the best. Uh, indeed, uh, this probably is the best uh, in terms of academic accomplishment of uh, the Westmont graduates to date. Um, so congratulations on being the best, or, or nearly the best, of all the, uh, there are other classes represented here, I realize we don't uh, <laughs> want to be thrown off the podium before I have my 15 minutes. Let's put off this question of the best for, uh, for a few moments. For now, I'd like to encourage you to be prepared and don't duck. During the fourth year of my 18 years as professor at the University of California, Berkeley, in the providence of God, Jesus Christ came into my life. That's a good story, and you can read about it in my book, Science and Christianity, uh, but uh, that would detract from my main purpose this morning. During the autumn of my sixth year on the faculty at Berkeley, uh, a new chemistry PhD student, Rich Davies, just gifted Rice University undergraduate, knocked on my door, and he said to me, Professor Schaefer, are you a Christian? Having little choice, I answered in the affirmative. Rich explained that he was part of a group of uh, chemistry and chemical engineering PhD students who were Christians, and that the university was unwilling to give them a room in which they could meet for lunch once a week. He noted that I had a large office. <laughs> That was a historical accident. Um, and wondered if they might meet there on Tuesdays for lunch. Of course, I said yes. Uh, the next Tuesday, I was absorbed in writing a paper when uh, in came eight uh, young Christian students. I said I had a sandwich and no plans uh, for lunch and wondered if I could sit in with them. They responded in the affirmative, and I sat in with them for the next 12 years of Tuesdays. Uh, Jeff Chalmers, 
one of the best of this group, uh, was a Westmont uh, student, uh, now distinguished professor uh, of chemical engineering at Ohio State University. Um, I must say that over the years, those students encouraged me a lot more than I encouraged them. Um, two years later, my wife and I and uh, our daughter Charlotte traveled around the world, um, thanks to the Guggenheim Foundation. In the meantime, my large office was occupied by two visiting professors, one from Australia and the second, Steve Bell, from Dundee, Scotland. Uh, the first Thursday I was back, six professors walked into my office Thursday for lunch. Steve Bell uh, reported that he had met these people during his sabbatical year at Berkeley and invited them to meet for lunch in my office once a week. I joined the group and was member of, uh, a member of it for uh, the next uh, 10 years. It was a very special group. Uh, the leader uh, from beginning to end my time at Berkeley was David Cole, professor of biochemistry at uh, Berkeley. Upon his retirement, Dave and Thelma moved to Santa Barbara and Dave became a valued member of the Westmont College Board of Trustees. Uh, Dave was taken recently to be with the Lord Jesus. Some of you would know that. Um, over the years, this uh, small Christian faculty group uh, reached out to the campus, bringing distinguished speakers, John Stott, uh, Carl Henry, um, uh, Oz Guinness. Uh, incidentally, one of the, uh, we had sabbatical visitors to this group, and one of them was one of your professors, <coughs> Russell Howell, who joined us for a year. During my 15th year <coughs> on the Berkeley faculty, I was asked to teach freshman chemistry. This was a challenge as the physical sciences lecture hall holds 550 students and every seat is always filled in freshman chemistry. There is one unique feature of the physical, uh, physical sciences lecture hall. It's divided into three parts and it revolves, which is always a shock to the students the first day of class. Uh, the purpose is that you can be there preparing demonstrations, laboratory demonstrations, of course, in the case of chemistry, for two hours beforehand and then the first time you press the button and the Stage revolves, the students are in awe. Uh, so um, first class, I was a little nervous about this. There are actually 700 and some students there because as you know, freshman chemistry has a large uh, depletion rate. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, So it was a lot of people uh, there and uh, I was supposed to speak for 45 minutes. Then my assistant, Lonnie Martin, would press the magic button, stage would go around and he would dazzle them with the chemistry demonstration. Well, I um, had 40 minutes to say instead of uh, 45, and so when I was finished, I was, I called on Lonnie. I said, Lonnie, come around. The students, of course, didn't know who Lonnie was. They were a bit curious, and there was no response. I called a little louder, Lonnie, the, the time has come. Still no response. So I walked around to the back and said, Lonnie, come on, I'm getting embarrassed here. You know, we've got to do this demo. And he said, Prof, you said to be ready in 45 minutes, and I'll be ready in 45 minutes. <laughs> so I went back to the front and uh, with nothing to say, but I said to the students, let me tell you a story about uh, something that happened to me in church um, yesterday. Great silence. This is the uh, first class these students had ever had at Berkeley, and they, didn't, they weren't prepared for this. And then I said, well, let me be more specific and tell you what happened in the Bible study. Even quieter. Uh, you know, they said, well, my parents told me we were going to meet some nuts here at Berkeley, and uh, <laughs> here we hit the jackpot on the first class. Uh, and uh, I told them that uh, the leader of the Bible study, had, I, expect, I, I shared with them I was going to be here in front of 700 students and, and hoped that they would have some sympathy. None followed. In fact, he told a story about his own freshman chemistry teacher who uh, beat his wife, kicked the dog, and everything possible. And then he asked them the the famous question, what is the difference between a dead dog lying in the middle of the street and a dead chemistry professor lying in the middle of the street? This lightened the atmosphere. In fact, the students roared at the very thought of this. <clears throat> I didn't think it was very funny yet. Uh, <laughs> looked out in their eyes, you see these wheels turning, these bright young people. If this man were a dead chemistry professor lying in the middle of the road right before finals, they might pass us all. And then uh, Tony Smith, who told this dreadful story, said the difference between a dead dog lying in the middle of the road and a dead chemistry professor lying in the middle of the road is that there are skid marks in front of the dead dog. <laughs> a 
Well, after class, <laughs> I survived it, and um, uh, a bunch of young people came up, and uh, they seemed to be in two groups. The uh, first uh, young man came up who was quite aggressive, and he said, Professor, uh, are you a Christian? And I said, yeah, I am. And he said, well, uh, the most inspiring teacher I ever had in high school was my chemistry teacher last year, and he told me it was impossible to be a scientist and to be a Christian. And he marched off, and a number followed him. Uh, and then uh, a young lady came up to me, uh, a little closer than I preferred, uh, and uh, she said, Prof, we can use you. Now, at Berkeley, if somebody says that about you, you need to be careful. <laughs> it, it's not quite, I said, well, what do you have in mind? She said, well, I'm a, I'm a member of a, a, a group here called InterVarsity Christian Fellowship, and we'd like you to come and, and, and speak and answer the question that young man just asked whether it's possible to be a scientist and a Christian. And so they, I said, well, what I have to do is just show up and speak for a half hour. I did, and, and that was the first of some 500 lectures at major universities I've given on science and Christianity. So again, be prepared and don't duck. God will drop wonderful opportunities into your lap. Let's go back to this question of the best. Um, it was clear at Berkeley, and even more so at my two alma mater, Stanford and MIT, that the best of the best of our graduates were expected to become very wealthy and give most of their wealth back to Berkeley. Uh, if that failed, maybe they could become a famous scientist or a great novelist, or perhaps the best might be uh, a universe, United States senator who supported the University of California at Berkeley very generously. Now, I have... I'm looking at most of you. I have no problem with any of you becoming very wealthy if you do it in an ethical manner. And I do hope that most of it will come back to Westmont. Um, but I would suggest for Westmont graduates some different definitions of the best. Uh, let's look ahead 10 years to the year 2026. And please consider the following six questions. First. Will you, 10 years from now, be more certain of the truth as it is found in Jesus? Second, will you be more steadfast in your pursuit of Christ? Third, will you know God better? Fourth, will you desire to serve God better? Fifth, will you have a greater zeal for God? And finally, will you have a greater love for those who are lost and perishing apart from Christ. My sincere prayer is that the Westmont class of 2016 will be not only the brightest, but the best. God bless you all. Thanks very much.